What's up guys and welcome back to part 3 of our playthrough of Fighting Fantasy Secrets of Salamonis, the book by Steve Jackson. In the previous part we ended up killing the Ratipiller finally, getting back to where we were supposed to be and we came across this uh, guild master who gave us a list of different quests to take. At the end of the last part we spent about 6 hours deciphering what items we might need for some of these quests and we have zero gold to buy them so we've decided to go with the quest of taking care of the pest control somewhere i think it's in the mines mm. so we're going to jump straight into that and we're going to go on our first adventure here right away so let's go we start yeah you know about king salomon's mine don't you the guild master asks without waiting for a reply it lies in the hills north of the city trouble is when you start digging around underground it's only going to be a matter of time before you disturb something that would have been better left alone a mole man hopefully with a long cloth. Yeah. Do you know what sort of pests the miners are having trouble with, you ask? No idea. Could be anything from rat men to rock grubs. Who knows? Mind you, if you're planning on heading underground yourself, it might be wise to visit the bazaar before you set off, which is pointless because we have no money. Yep. If you want to head to the bazaar to equip yourself for the task ahead, Make a note of number 273. Uh, 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 uh. If you would rather set off for King Salmon's silver mine straight away, turn to 273. There we go. Straight on it. 273. I hope we don't die. <laughs> well, if we do, at least we'll know what we will need to take it on. The mines do not lie far from Salamonis, in the hills that form the southern border of Trolltooth Pass. All approaches to the area are patrolled by the Salamonis soldiery, and your journey passes without incident. Sometime later, you find yourself approaching the main entrance of King Salomon's mine. The place is busy with miners, including dwarfs as well as humans, with carts being loaded with ore and rubble. You confidently stride up to the half-ogre who appears to be in charge and wave your adventurer's permit at him. When he asks what your business is here, you... you... Oh, you here for the pest control job then, he asks. If you answer yes, turn to 313. If you reply no, turn to 334. He'll probably just send you on his way or make you a slave or something. Mm -hmm. So, should we say yes? Yeah, we are. 313. We might as well, right? Is King Solomon good? Or do we not know yet? Yeah. We, I don't think we've had much to do with him. We just know he's the most wealthiest king. Yeah. And he's reigned for a long time. So, he's probably bad. Probably. He's probably got secrets, right? That's a relief, the half ogre replies. They've shut down production in the western galleries and none of the miners want to work those sections whilst they're down there. You ask the half ogre foreman what they are. Didn't they tell you? Rock grubs, of course. Oh, it's not rat men. We've already taken on the rat appeal. We haven't got a grub enemy. But a brave adventurer like you will make short work of them, I'm sure. You just need to enter the mine there. He points to the entrance before you. Take the first left, then it's left again, and then take the first right. Okay, I think it's Should I write time. that down? Yeah. So, do you want to hold that? Yeah. So, take the first left. Yeah. Yeah. Left again. Left again. And then first right. And your first right. Okay, so this is the the foreman's map, so. Okay. I expect he's telling the truth if he wants the quest done. Yeah. Just bring back evidence of anything you dispose of down there and you'll get paid one gold piece for each nice. one. If you want to enter the mine, turn to 441. If you've had a change of heart and want to return to Salomonis and the Adventurers Guild to pick up a different job, turn to 375. No, let's, let's do it. 441. Quest. Yep. That's how we can smash these grubs. The main tunnel into the silver mine is broad and tall, shored up with solid support. It is very well made and you feel safe as you head underground. You do not need a source of illumination either, since flickering lanterns are positioned at regular intervals, providing you with plenty of light to see where you are going. You pass miners pushing carts <laughs> aboard before them, and you cannot have travelled more than 100 metres when the tunnel branches. You can hear voices of the sound of pickaxes echoing from the right-hand tunnel, but nothing from the one to the left. Do you want to take the left branch or take the right branch? Should we just go where we're meant to be going? You... Uh... Probably, but I feel like we could maybe find out more information by talking to some of the workers. Yeah. No, yeah, I don't want to miss out, but then are we going to get lost? 
Surely we can head back to the branch. I hope so. Should we write this page down? Already? Yeah, <laughs> yeah go on yeah, then. Yeah. What page is it? 441. Okay. Okay, um, so okay. I mean, we, we know where to go. It's not like we're getting lost. We just want to see if we can actually go right. down. Let's just, up. yeah, let's see what the options yeah. are. By 461. Right. Oh, but what if we're not meant to be here and... We've got an adventurer's permit. Yeah, and it went going against the directions you told us to go. Yeah, I suppose. We'll see what happens. Ooh. As you follow the right-hand tunnel, you continue to pass miners coming the other way. Some carrying spades and pickaxes, some pushing carts of ore between them, and some stripped to the waist and filthy with grime, Oof. who just look like they're coming off shift. This is clearly the part of the mine that is being worked at present, and you can see seams of silver running through the rock walls, shining in the light of the lanterns and torches that illuminate these galleries. One of the dwarves, who has a tattoo of a dragon, ooh, dwarf with a dragon tattoo, <laughs> on one muscly arm, looks you up and down. Are you here to dig? You shake your head. Didn't think so. Not with that pig sticker anyhow, he <laughs> mutters, looking at your short sword. Looks like thirsty work, you remark. It is, replies another of the dwarf miners. This one with a thick black beard plated with amber beads. You haven't got a drink on you, have you? I'm absolutely parched. If you have some Shazarian ale and are happy to share it with the dwarves, turn to 69. If not, turn to 87. Did I make a note of that? Yeah. Shazarian ale. Maybe make a point of... Um... Dwarves. Well, maybe we should make like a new sort of page for like, because if we're going to start again, we might as well start from that point where we're on to the next quest. Yeah. Um, where was it? 87. Sorry, I don't, you reply. Not as sorry as I am, says the dwarf. If you have the charisma special skill, yes. turn to 455. If not, do you want to return to the junction and see where the left hand tunnel takes you? Okay. If you haven't already, turn to 109. If you've not already been down there, turn to 109, yet. Yeah. Or do you want to leave the mine now? So let's use our charisma special skill. Yeah. 455. Are we chatting these doors, Will? We're getting them pissed off our charisma and then the really oiled up dragon tattoo man, they're going to oil it up. Yes. We might be able to get some work in here and make some gold. You get chatting to the dwarves nonetheless. They are glad to take a break from the back-breaking work and they tell you about the rock grubs and granites that have been plaguing the mining operations here of late and that some wretch called a Shivering Man oh. is hiding out somewhere in the lower levels. Okay. Anyway, we'd best get back to work, says the dwarf with the dragon tattoo, eyeing a nearby Sal Salomonian guard who is clearly here to make sure the miners are working and that nobody runs off with anything they should not. You bid them farewell. Do you want to return to the junction and see where the left hand tunnel takes you? Or do you want to leave the mine? Yeah, let's do it. 109, shivering mine. We've read that somewhere. Is that on the back of the book? I don't remember that. Here we go. So, will you bring cardinals? So, this is all the quest basically. Will you bring cardinals into justice or set off in search of the horn of the black unicorn? And just who is the Shivering Man? What does he have to do with the mystery of the Screaming Sky? Ooh. So the Screaming Sky is one of the missions as well, so maybe we have to do this one before we find out about that one. Yeah, so, maybe. Um, maybe there's an option to um, search the lower levels before we leave. Yeah. All right, 109 then, so let's take the junction path. As you proceed along the left-hand branch, it begins to slope downwards. Water drips from the ceiling to pool on the uneven rock floor of the tunnel rather than it being lit by space lanterns burning torches illuminate the way onwards from here eventually you reach another junction neither of the tunnels that continue from this point are lit so you lift one of the torches from the wall bracket and hold it aloft as you are considering which way to go you you fancy you fancy you hear distant as you are considering which way to go you fancy you hear distant Footsteps, that's a really confusing uh, sentence. You hear distant footsteps coming from the right hand passage. This time, do you want to head left or turn right? I mean, this is where we're meant to turn left again. Yeah. So it's what is it? Just footsteps. But what if the footsteps is just shivering? Or oh, what? I mean, it's probably an enemy, isn't it? 
Because we're not meant to be down this tunnel. We get a gold piece for every enemy we kill. Every grub. Oh. Should we search it anyway? I just don't want this to be a trap and... Yeah. Just let's remember that page, you know, 109. 109. Yeah. We're making lots of checkpoints. We are. This is in the aid of a quest, though. It is in aid of a quest. I don't know what that is on my glass. I hope it's not your sick. No. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> oh. Um. So Lieutenant Wright, one eight two. One eight two. You follow the sound of footsteps along the tunnel, but without managing to catch up with whoever is making them. And then the tunnel branches once more, but now you cannot hear any footsteps at all. Oh no, we're going to be lost now. Take the left-hand branch, follow the right-hand branch, retrace your steps and leave the mine. So we've gone left again. No, we're not. We've gone right. Should we just retrace our steps? But that's to leave the mine. See if it gives us an option to go back in, because if not, we'll just go back to 109. What do you mean? No, that is, and leave King Solomon's mind. Yeah, but surely you've got to do the quest, oh, okay. so... Let me just no, check. No, you can leave the mine at any time, couldn't you? Yeah, so we we'll, might as well just do that and go back to where we were going. Oh, okay. see where it takes us out. Should we just go back to 109? Yeah, yeah, it just saves some time. Like, there might be something down this path. In fact, let's just let's just follow through with it and then... Um, yeah, and then go if back If we to die or we get trapped, we'll just go back to 109 okay. anyway. Okay, so should we take the left-hand branch or the right-hand branch? Should we right again? Yeah, let's go like, as far away yeah. from the other way. So, turn to page 44. Is this my goal? My, yeah. 44. As you hurry along the tunnel, you do not hear the footsteps again, but you do hear the sound like skittering of pebbles on a beach, as if you had just kicked the pile of stones you sent them and sent them tumbling across the floor, but you are not responsible for making the noise. Scuttling across the ground in front of you, picked out by the guttering flames of your torch, are half a dozen curious creatures. You could easily mistake them for small boulders. Were it not for their scorpion-like legs and tails, their mouths full of sharp teeth and their burning orange eyes, these creatures are granite and the bane of miners everywhere. Drawing your sword, you prepare to deal with the pests. Fight them three at a time. Three at a time. So what are we doing? Like the dice roll for the enemy three times? Yeah, I guess so. I'm trying to think if there's a way to speed it up. How would you do that three at a time? So they roll... Oh my god. So they have a chance of hitting us three, three times. times. Yeah. But their stamina's are quite low. If, yeah. you, if you kill if you kill all of the creatures, turn sixty four. If you wish to escape during the battle and flee from the mine, uh, don't forget your penalty for this. Turn to two and four. So we might as well fight them, right? Yeah. All right then. So we're going to take to the battle page. What do you call win it? Right. <laughs> what do they look like? Little scorpion rock things. Little oh. scorpion rocks. <laughs> Rat. We don't have scorpion <laughs> rocks, we have rats. I think rats again. Yeah? Yeah, rats will have to do. They kind of look like boulders. Boulder granites. Okay then, so um, let's just have a quick look. How can we so, do this? So the, we're just going to have to... Oh shit, yeah. Unless, right, should we just add the first three yeah. staminas together? So that's ten stamina for the first three. Yeah. Because it's three, four, and yeah. three. And then um, they roll three times and can possibly hit us three times every round. Should we do that? Or what's the stamina? Oh, no, goal? actually, because then um, then they're going to get three hits. Like We'll have to work out when one's dead. What's the stamina of all of them together? All of them? Yeah. 10, 12. 19. 19. So... All six of them have a stamina really of 19. So, how many hits is that? 17, 15, 9, 10. But the thing is, if we do it that way, we're going to have to work out how many hits they get each time. So, we're going to have to make note of when one dies. Let's just do that. 
Yeah. Let's do that. So the skill's always four anyway. Yeah, so let's just change that for, for a start. So that means they're going to get start off getting six rolls against us if we do it that way. But So they've literally got have... six chances to damage us, basically. Yeah, but... The skill's quite low, to be fair. So what are we putting down for stamina then? Um, 19. Okay, so 19. Okay, so then when we get down to 16, we know one's dead. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right, let's do it then. So, okay. here are all of these fighting fancy dice. Okay, so, our roll. And so we're rolling six times for the enemy. Yeah. 17. 18. 18 for us. Versus. But can they even do that? No, they no, get 16. Can. Yeah, so we so, yeah. take two. 17. And there's still six alive. Yeah, so there's still six alive, so I'll roll again. 15. 15, can they get that? They've got, to, you can get 16, can't they? Yeah. So they've got to roll two. I rolled a one, so yes. damage, so one of them is dead. Yeah. Five remaining. So uh, we're down to 15 now. So how many points is left to take down another one? <laughs> if we get one more hit, enough one's dead. No. Because there's three stamina. We've done the three stamina. Yeah, so if we get another hit, we'll kill this one with three stamina. Oh, we're not doing them in order. Might as well do this one, and then we know we've got two hits left to kill that one. I'll tell you what then. What have we taken off them already for? Yeah. Should we kill this one then? We need to get. We've already killed that one because we've taken four. If it is, this is complicated. Right, let's yeah, we're making it way too complicated, right? If we get one more hit, we've killed two of them. Okay. That's, there, that's what we need to know. So okay. I'll roll again. Okay, so that's eleven. Oh 12, no! 13, Thirteen for us. So they've got five goes. What's nope. that? Not enough. Right, so. We've damaged. We've got it five times. We haven't been doing it. No, we haven't. Oh, because they couldn't physically get a roll, but now they can physically get it. Oh, this is way too confusing. We should have just done it. I had a book told us to do it. Should we do one? At... No. We've already killed two. We killed one. We only killed one so far. Have we not had two successful dives? I don't know. Right. Let's just let's do one more round, and if we kill it, then we just we will roll four attack rounds for the enemy. This is okay. Really yeah, we we shouldn't have done. We should have done it how the book told us to do. Right, our roll. 15, 20. So they can't get that. So yeah. two of them are dead. Right now we're going to play it back to what it's supposed to be. So we've we've got. What about their stamina then? So we start again. Dead. So we've got basically from now on, we're rolling our attack, and the enemy has four. Attack rolls against us. Okay. 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 So right, our roll. Seventeen. Seventeen for us. They can't get. They None can't of them. Get that. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's down to thirteen stamina. So if we get another attack in now, which they can't get, another one is dead. Mm -hmm. The fourth, the one with four stamina. This is very confusing to people watch. <laughs> yeah, and to, and to us. We obviously. So what's that? Nineteen. Nineteen. Can't. Yep. So that means three of them are dead. So we're just counting the last three on the yep. box. Now. So if we get a low roll, the enemy has three attack rolls against us. Yep. Ooh. Nineteen. You can't get that. Yep. So down to nine. What are the stamina left for these last three? Um. Well, what have we got? Which three is it? The bottom three. So if one of them's got two. Six, seven, eight, nine, yeah. So he's dead. So oh, there's only two left now. So if the enemy gets. No, he's not dead yet. We've got a, we've, we've got that. We've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got two. Um... Yeah, but are we not killing them in all? Are we not killing them one by one? We've just got damage. So he's dead. Okay. So there's there's only two attack rounds against us now. There's only two of them there's left. There's not though because they've technically got nine stamina. Yeah, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I've not, I've not taken it off, have I? Yeah, you just did. That's what I mean. I think I must have forgot to last time. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, our this robot. Is extremely confusing. Made it a lot harder, and it's not entertaining, <gasps> yet, I'm sure. Twelve. Just to see us scramble. So they, they could do an attack round on us now. Yes. We roll the twelve. The enemy has rolled twelve. Yeah. So no. Ooh, but then we've got to roll two so more. Now two. One more. One more attack round for the enemy. No. Okay. So nothing happens. Or do we get damage? Uh, no, nothing happens. I don't think because we matched it. Okay. Let's, yeah, let's just do it that right. way. Our roll. 16 for us. They can just get 16, so yeah. there's no point rolling for them. So we'll our roll again. Oh. 14 for us. Let me roll one. Nice. Okay. What so we do? do we take stamina off him? Mm hmm. Let's just take it until the stamina goes down now. Yeah. Okay, our roll. Oh, did I just no. knock your dice out? 17, so they can't do that, so does that mean we take two more stamina? Yeah. So how many's left? Two? There should be. Yeah. One of probably dead now, to be honest. But no, because none of them have got five stamina. Got fucked up somewhere. Our roll, 19. Can't. Okay, now there's one left. There's definitely one left at this point. Our roll. 19. There we go, so we've got one HP left. Yeah. Maybe we should just do them one by one next time. Yeah, we would have done that, but I don't know why we did It's It's because it's, it's going to be hard for us to list them all, so... Our roll. 16 for us. Yeah. So nothing happens, so... Because we roll our roll again. Them, no, it's our roll again. Why? Because we don't know there's any damage. So, so we, we didn't roll for them. So how do we know what they got? Because... We, it, we got 16, they can't get anything so more. So we check them? No. We roll again, because no damage gets them. What are you on about? If, if they roll... If we roll 16 and they roll... They didn't roll. Oh, okay, okay, I get it. So we yeah, killed so them, dead. yeah. Dead. All right, let's, let's move on from this. <laughs> Terrible. I can, you're so stressed. I am stressed. Um, enemies showing up as a zombie in here. Oh, it's not changed, has it? Yes. Okay. Um, if you kill all the creatures, 10 to 64. It's your go, then. Yeah, I was going to say we should definitely drink for that shocking display. Gotta drink just to forget that whole thing just happened. Okay. Ooh, if you want to, you may sever the creature's tails and take them with yes. you as evidence you have dealt with the pests. Mm -hmm. Having done that, do you want to keep following the tunnel through the chamber and on into the darkness, or do you want to retrace your steps and leave the mine? Mm -hmm. Well, there's no point leaving the mine. Oh yes, yeah, so we might as well continue. Yeah, so, um, I just hope we can get back to. Um, Maybe it's just the shivering man down there. So we have six granite tails. Yep. So that's six gold, which is. Oh, that's eight. That's like good. Yep. So where were we? Uh, so ten to eighty-five. We're going to continue into the darkness. Eventually, the tunnel curves round and joins up with another, probably the one from the other branch you didn't take. Uh, okay. They become one tunnel again and soon ends abruptly on one side of a vast natural fissure in the rock. A crevasse. <laughs> a, a crevice? A crevasse? I would say crevice. Crevice? That, that doesn't like a spell. A crevasse? It's spanned by a rickety rope bridge. Holding your torch high, you can just see that it links to another tunnel mouth on the other side. Standing on the other side of the bridge at the entrance to the tunnel, you can just make out a figure. It is a man. He has a dishevelled appearance and a hunched posture, and he appears to be shaking. <gasps> hey Dean, how you doing? Hey Oblivion! Do you want to step out onto the bridge with the intention of approaching the shivering man, or do you want to double back and follow the tunnels that brought you here and exit the mine? Huh. I thought they said they were rock grubs. No, the shivering man's down here though. Yeah, I know. Maybe the rock grubs were on the left side of the tunnel that we didn't go down. So, I mean, we might as well try and do it. I feel like this bridge is going to collapse unless we have some weird... Let's just go yeah. for it. One, one, two. Hit the ring riot, I'll be lurking. No worries, man. Appreciate it.
You were about to step on the bridge when you see the flickering torchlight glint from the blade of a knife in the man's hand. Stay away, he shouts as he takes the knife to one of the ropes holding up the bridge. Oh, no. You change your mind pretty quickly then, but you are not out of danger yet. An ear-splitting shrieking sound suddenly echoes from one of the crevasse. <laughs> Crevices, I would say. Crev yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't look it's spelled right, does it? It is such a horrible sound that makes your heart race and your own limbs start to shake. If you have some beeswax... Oh, we're going to turn into a shipping bird. Oh, no. If not, 10 to 1, 3, 4. Write that down. Beeswax. Pest control. Yeah. The sound is like a cacophony of screams, but they are so loud and terrible, it is so inescapable that you feel like your ears could start to bleed at any moment, or that you will go mad if you have to listen to the discordant shrieking a moment longer. Oh. I just read it. <laughs> you took one point from your current skill and your initial skill score, and then the source of the terrible shrieking appears, turn to 175. What's our initial score? Wasn't it like... They were all always the same, wasn't it? No, we, we boosted them, so it must be... Yeah, we must have got it up to 10 from 6. Yeah, so do we just lower it to... So our uh, uh, initial skill is down to 5, so we just deduct 1. Yeah, Yeah. so maybe write down those stats, 10, 10, 6, next to the... Before we started playing today, because that's our checkpoint is before we take any more quests yeah, so... on until we finish one. Oh, I did. I wrote them down last time. Okay, okay. So our scale is now nine because we didn't have the beeswax. I'm making it the new ones as well. Okay. Uh, I was wondering if you, if you leave these areas, surely you have to go back to the quest page anyway. And then you can yeah, just take the quest again. Like, obviously, you're probably not meant to do that, but. Yeah. Good. We'll see. Flying along the chasm towards you is a swarm of hideous creatures. At first glance, they appear to be fish. <gasps> They're these things! With sharp piranha teeth, but they are carried through the cold cave air on ragged bat-like wings. What is even worse is that their eyes are milky white as if blind, and you can see their bones through torn patches of skin where the scales are missing. These are the shriekers that are feared by people who live on the borders of the Trolltooth Pass. Oh my god! I don't think it's a giant fish at the door. Can we get it? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll wait for you to get back. Not even like a spooky book. The spookiest Amazon delivery. Okay. Uh, whenever the screaming starts, bloodshed and madness are sure to follow. Oh, Startled and terrified by the appearance of the foul undead horrors, you do not feel you can take them on, and so there is only one option left open to you. You must flee. However, as you do so, the shriekers swoop down okay. on their rotting wings and try to take chunks out of you with their viciously sharp teeth. Roll four dice. If the total roll is equal to or less than your stamina score, turn to 195. Shit. Okay. If your total roll is greater than your stamina score, turn to 212. So what's our stamina? Ten. Ten. Oh. Your roll. Ten. Oh, we already got ten. Can we see what we would have got? A lot. <laughs> Oh, it's four dice, and it? Shit. Yeah. Okay, so we failed. Let's not as well go. Uh, turn to 212. At least we can go back to the checkpoint and do um, the yeah. quest properly. Yeah. Or go back to the quest page anyway and take something else. Because we've got no money. We need to get money from somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so fear drives you on, but the shriekers soon catch up with you. And nonetheless, roll one die and add... Two to that number rolled and deduct that from your stamina score. If you're still alive... No. <laughs> we haven't lost any stamina yet, have we? Yeah, I know. It's saying add two to... We already rolled, what, 18? Oh, is it to add it to that number? Yeah, and then deduct that from your stamina score. No, I don't think so. It's got to be. No, it's just you start again. Okay. 
four dice, you could just... Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you, let's roll one dice, so if you want to do it. Okay, come on. We, we might survive this. Three. Five. So we take five from our stamina, taking us to under five. If you're still alive, as soon as you reach a better lit tunnel close to the entrance, the Shriekers break off their attack and return to darkness. But you don't stop running until you're back outside, bathed in sunlight. Two, two, one, four. That's the exit of the mine, isn't it? Yeah. Should we take a big fat drink? Go back. Um... Should we continue onwards first and then do that once we find out what happens when we leave the mine? Yeah, but we're always going to end up 214 no matter what we do. Yeah, but let's see what actually happens oh, when okay. we leave the mine okay. first because we've got the tails, at least we'll know if we get the money or whatever. You emerge from the mine once more, blinking at the bright sunlight that greets you. If you killed anything whilst you were underground and brought back its head or tail, 10 to 233. Uh, yeah, so we do that. Yeah, might as well. How are we going to get money? I suppose we could kill six things and leave, but six gold is not enough to buy anything. No, but we can go back um, round and take the left, left, right, can't we? Yeah. The half ogre foreman catches sight of you and beckons you over. You've been busy, he says, smiling. He then takes a purse of coins from his pocket and counts them, some of them into his palm. The foreman will pay you one gold piece for every head or tail you've collected and gain two amulet points. Oh. Bidding the half ogre farewell with your purse a little heavier than it was when you arrived in King Salmon's mine, you make the return journey to Salamonis. You arrived at the north gate as dusk is falling over the city. Move the wheel of the week one day and turn to 383. So, should we go drink a drink and go back to the and just check what happens when you go completely left through the cave? Yes. Yeah, so what page do we go to for that? Uh, I've written... I've written 109. I think that's right, yeah. But I can't remember when that was. Does it take you back to 109 after you've spoken to the dwarves? I'm not sure. Let me just check. 182. Because we've already got our six tails, haven't we? Yeah. Trying to see where these dwarfs were, how far into it. Hmm, must have been before then. Oh. So we're already down the right hand. Oh no no. Oh no. shit. So this is the right hand path. Should we should we check what's down the left hand side of the right hand branch? Or go back to the other way and see what we're supposed to do? Wherever we haven't been yet, I think. Well, we've not been down there, but we've not also, also not been down the left hand path yet. Okay. I feel like 241, is that not where the shivering man was? No. No, it can't be, that's where the right one goes. Mm, right, let's go back to 109 and take the left path and see where it takes us. Okay. Yeah. So, Why, what was on there? I didn't read it properly. It's probably something to do with the Shrieking Man, to be honest, but uh, I don't think we have anything to deal with him. So let's just check out the left hand path. So 395. And put our skill back to 10. Yeah. You descend still further as the tunnel corkscrews down through solid rock until you finally arrive at a rough-hewn circular chamber. Leading off from it are two tunnels, but you notice that some strange markings have been chiselled into rock above each tunnel entrance. The angular shape etched into the rock above the left-hand tunnel looks a bit like a skull. The one above the right-hand tunnel looks like a set of jagged, uh, jagged fangs. What do you want to do now? Right. Is the one with the the jagged jaws, is that going to be those shriekers again? Possibly. Which we can't fight. It's either enter the left-hand tunnel, enter the right-hand tunnel. Is the left one the one with the skull? Yes. Let's check the skull one out. Yeah. Yeah. But does that not mean death? Yeah, but the shriekers will kill us anyway, or at least destroy us, so we might as well find out. Okay. One, two, eight. Yeah. Did we, did we take a big fat drink? I did. I'll take another one in a second. 
It does not look like anyone has been down here for a long time. As you notice, a number of wooden roof supports are rotten and flaking. Oh no. If you have the trap knowledge special scale, 10 to 160. If not, 10 to 191. So let's turn there and get crushed and then we're going back to uh, 109 anyway. <laughs> 191. Ah, uh, we die. It is a shame you do not read dwarf runes, otherwise you would have known that these mine workings have been abandoned due to earth tremors. You were a long way down the tunnel when one of these tremors hits. You have no idea what caused it, unusual seismic activity or a burrowing monster perhaps, but you witness the result firsthand. For a moment you find yourself in a bubble of eerie stillness, then with a terrible groan the roof gives way and caves in on top no. of you. <laughs> So let's not do that. Is that it? Yeah, you, you did. Um, so we're going back to one and nine. Yeah. So let's do the same thing, but we'll we'll go down the cave with the sh the well the fangs, right? Yes. Three nine five. Another big fat drink. Mm -hmm. Um, enter the right hand tunnel. Three nine four. As you proceed further along the tunnel and head deeper underground, you notice that the walls appear less chiselled and more chewed. You are just wondering whether you should turn back when your flickering torchlight reflects from the polished shell of a huge grub-like head that is possessed of a massive pair of mandibles. Oh, a massive pair of mandibles. <laughs> Powerful enough to cut through solid rock. You have no choice but to draw your sword and defend yourself. Rock grub. Skill of 7, Stamina 11. If you win, turn to 161. If you wish to escape, you can turn to 214. So, here we go, let's fight. This is the rock grub with his giant mandibles. Yeah, I'm not sure what we've got for that. Have we got anything? Um, We have a eel. Let's have a look. What have we got? We got toad, lizard. What does the lizard look like? That's not a lizard. I think it is. Is it? Um, Hydra? Goblin? Eel. Eel? Eel, the closest thing we've got. He's a grub, just he's a bit more yeah. grubby than that. Okay, so we got a skill of 7, was it? Yeah, and stamina of 11. Okay, at least this is more straightforward this time. It's just, if you win, 10 to 1, 6. Alright, let's do it then. So, 7, we've got a bit of an advantage skill-wise, so let's go. What did you get? I can't see it. We got 18. 18? 18 for us. Enemy roll. 14? Yep, so Rock Grub is going down from that. He's hefty stamina, but He does. It's because he's got those huge mandibles yeah, we have to take out. Protect him. Our roll? 16. Oh, oh, oh yeah! Beautiful. Can't get that, can he? Are we slicing one mandible at a time? Yep. We chop those mandibles off now. And now he's exposed for good. 10, 11, right, 14. That was supposed to be 7, wasn't it? So. Uh, 14 for us. Enemy roll. Nice. So he is down to 5 because I deleted the stamina by accident. Okay, our roll. You got distracted by his mandibles. I think I did, I was thinking 18. about too much. 18 for us. The max I can get is 19, so. Oh. Beautiful. So Mr. Rock Grub is down to 3. Two more hits. Yep. Our roll again. 16. Yeah, 16 for us. Enemy roll. 14. He's done. No, he's got one. No, he's got one left. Who has the balls to use luck points for. Uh... I know. Unless, <laughs> unless you're desperate. I suppose you could put like uh, 10 into luck, though, couldn't you? I'm sure we've used it like once towards the end yeah. of. Yeah, when we like we know it's the final battle. So yeah, that's 14. Up. 14 for us, so 7 or below. Ah, you bitch! 9, so that's damage to us, right? Yeah. Where are we? Stamina is down to 8. What's our base stamina? Is it, is it actually 10? Um, yeah. It, it, no, it'd be 12. You start at 12. Yeah, oh, yeah, we haven't got anything to eat, though, have we? No, we're not coming across any way to heal yet, I don't think. 19. 19 for us, so that is the max they can get, so I think we've done that one. Yeah, so yeah, Mr. Dead. Rock Grub 
with his mandibles, he's in the dirt. If he wins, and he wants it. But well, that's basically the quest complete, but obviously there's more down here. It's only one goal, though. No, there's got to be something, because he's the main quest. Yeah, no, but I'm saying, if you if you only took the rock grub path and we didn't kill the granites... I don't think there was a choice to go down here from the other way. Severing the rock grub's head from the rest of its disgusting body, you secure it to your backpack with a piece of twine before setting off. Back up the spiralling tunnel to the junction where you thought you heard footsteps echoing, so you can go that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you want to follow the passage you're in now to see what it leaves, or do you want to leave the mine? So we might as well leave the mine. Or should we get the six gold from the rat people? Oh, I thought we were cheating and saying we've done that, and then backtracked. Oh, do you know what? That's going to save us a lot of time, actually. Let's just say we did that already. Yeah. And drink. Again. Yeah. So we've It's, got... it's going to be the same yeah. result. And we don't have to do that really exhausting fight again. Oh. Right. So, leave the mine. so uh, I'm pretty sure we can just go back to this quest. We can go back to quest at any time. It gives you a, a choice to escape and leave. Yeah. And you just go back to the quest page. What was it, 214? Yeah. You emerge from the mine once more, blinking at the bright sunlight as it, that greets you. If you killed anything while you are underground and brought back its head or tail is proof, turn to 233. If not, turn to 375. So 233, let's get this, this tail done. So we got seven, yeah. Yeah. But it's still not enough to buy much, is it? Uh, the half-ogre foreman catches sight of you and beckons you over. You've been busy, he says, smiling. He then takes a purse of coins from his pocket and counts some of them into his palm. The foreman will you pay you one gold piece for every head or tail you've collected and gain two Aminor points. Beautiful. Oh, we're only one Aminor away. From being able to do the quest. Yeah. Most likely really hard compared we, to this one. We definitely need more money, don't we? Yeah, so we've got 15 there. And, yeah. Bidding the half ogre farewell, and with your purse a little heavier, uh, you make the return journey back to Salamonis. You arrive at the north gate as dusk is falling over the city. Move the wheel of the week hey, on one we day. Go. Oh, so maybe as time progresses, new things happen in the city. Yeah. Yeah. If it says if it is this day. Because yeah. otherwise, how else would you get money apart from quests? Yeah. There's got to be other opportunities. We'll soon find out. Three, eight, three. Progress. Very painful progress. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we were doing so well in the last one. Yeah. It's time you got some much needed rest and recuperation. If today is fire day... Oh, oh we just missed it. two, five, three. Oh, no. That's probably not a bad thing. It just means that you've already done one quest. Maybe. Yeah. If not, turn to 403. Maybe it's like party day or something on fire day. Yeah. Fire Island. Yeah. As you are a member of the Adventurers Guild, you have the right to rent a room for the night there. Board and lodging will cost you two gold pieces, but you'll be able to restore up to four stamina points. Alternatively, you can take a room at an inn, such as the Half Down Sock, for one gold piece, but you'll only restore two stamina points. Or we can sleep rough on the street free, but get one. Hmm. Uh, when you've decided where you want to sleep, deduct the appropriate number of gold pieces and make the related adjustments to your stamina score. Is it worth trying to rest on the streets and see what happens? Our stamina is like tiny. But we'll get one back and we might have to fight like a thief or something. But oh, our we, might get, we might get something for it. I can't see whatever's on the street that's going to attack us being that difficult to kill. As long as you don't mug us. Oh, no, we, there is no encounter. Oh, really? Yeah, it is, because then it goes on to this, so... It's up to you. I'd say we go on the street. On the street and yeah. get one back? Yeah. Yeah, okay then. So we slept on the street to nine stamina. Mm-hmm, okay. Um, if today is Wednesday, no. If today is Sea Day, no. If it's any other day of the week, 10 to 4, 2, 7. Maybe you do get mugged on like your second, or your, if you keep staying on the street. Actually, it wouldn't make a difference, would it? No. 
I guess it just matters how much stamina you get back, so it's just how desperate you are, I guess. Yeah. We are desperate. Was it four to... Top one. What is it? Not long after dawn, with the sun rising in the sky, you set off for the Adventurers Guild, ready to take on a quest to help raise your profile among the adventuring fraternity and the people of Salamonis. If you wanted to stop off at the bazaar on your way, make a note of number 120, uh, and to then turn to 446. If you want to head straight to the guild... Should we see if... Um... We can buy beeswax. <laughs> well... Either buy beeswax, what, and go back to the mountains? Probably. Or should we see if we can buy nose plugs and rope and do the toad men? Mm. Or we also need a strong armband for the caravan, but I don't know if you can buy them. Well, let's see if this takes us. Let's go to 443 and see if it lets us go to the bazaar. 443? Uh, 446, so. Before we get to go to any of these places, this is where it takes us. So, wait, wait, how did you get to this? It tells you to write down 120, but then you have to go to this page. Oh, okay. If you have a token or a dog bite, we have a token. Okay. Make a note of number seven on your okay, adventure just write sheet. Token seven. Um, ten to four hundred. Hmm. That's a bad. It was the token. I don't think. I don't think the token was a bad thing, was it? We got a token from. Oh, it was to avoid. It'll be to avoid the encounter with the. Um, the pitch uh, penny. Pitch penny. It's a actually. Oh, it's pig page. Yeah, so it's a pig page. Should do we do that every time? Yeah, I can't remember what we do though. We just roll. And if it's a four to if it's a four, five, or six, we recruit a person, and we get do we a get pig man. Someone to go work at the guttery yeah that's it and how much do we get for it is it one gold piece? one gold per pig man i think oh no it's it, it, 10 seller coins or yeah one. 10 it might be 10 seller coins or is it two seller coins we'll find out yeah okay so let's i'll roll for it four to six yeah so we've got one oh, more yeah. pig boy a tally maybe start a new tally no we've got three i Since start we... yeah i started oh, that again. tally okay, okay. did i I don't think you did. Should we start a new one? Yeah, Just to save cheating. Yeah. <laughs> one. Although we do need those salad coins. Um. Okay. So what the bazaar. Yeah, there are all manner of stalls set up with the bazaar, selling everything from astronomical instruments to zodiac readings. Looking around, you make a mental note of the items you think could prove most useful to you now that you're a full-blown member of the Adventurers Guild. You may buy as many items as you want, as long as you have enough money to pay for them. So, we can get... Oh, we can buy Shazarian Ale from here. Yeah, but we didn't need it, I don't yeah. think, because we used our charisma. Okay, so we have um, seven gold. There's an ancient treasure map, bag of salt, basilisk skin boots, beeswax, a copper armband, mm -hmm. empty bottle, length of rope, medusa grass, nose plugs, old lamp, uh, potions, provisions, ale. So, should we buy the nose plug and the length of rope? And then we can go on the Toadman quest. Do you not want to finish off the pest control quest though? We've finished it. Well, what about the Shivering Man? Because we need the Shivering Man to find out about the Screaming um, Sky quest. Yeah, but I don't think we're going to manage to get to him. No? Yeah, to be fair, he seems like he's quite an important part of one of the other quests, so maybe we should do another one that we think is a bit... What we can buy word? beeswax anyway. There's only gold, so... Uh, the thing is, that we're doing one quest at a time. I think we should only buy the, the one or two things we need for that quest in case we need to heal or something desperately yeah so, which is we and we i've already written down that we need the nose plugs and the rope is that in the the witch's cauldron place or is that a different quest uh, i can't remember what this one was turn to is it 120 the quest the guild that's the page so collect cauldron weeds is that the toad man one yeah, where is the tone man? 88, should I have a look? Oh, I've written 38. Why have I written 38? I, I think these are the pages once we've actually read the quest, and that's like when you continue on to the quest, if you know what I mean. Are you sure? Yeah, it's gotta be. Yeah, so, right, should we buy, what do we need for that one? We need length of rope, 
nose plugs, and then should we buy beeswax as well in case we ever come back to the... I feel like we should buy all of these eventually anyway. Well, I'm just thinking we should just buy what we need in case we need money to buy something on these. Right, yeah. so, let's, so, right, let's uh, take off what do we need. So how much is the length of rope and stuff? Length of rope is two gold pieces. So takes down to five and yeah, the are one, so... Oh, right, that we've got... And them. we need both of them for that one quest? Yeah. Okay. Link the rope. What else did we get? Nose plugs. Nose plugs. Oh, because we're going to that swampy area, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, so should we go back to one? Should we just jump straight into that quest? Yeah, let's. Um... Maybe go to 88 and then we'll just read it again. Cause... No, we'll go to 120 and we'll read it all and then it refreshes. So we're going to. 88. Is it 88? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I was, I was getting mixed up with 38. So we're looking for cauldron weed in the, the witch's sort of lakey place. Okay. Ah, yes. Collect cauldron weed from witches of Drew. <laughs> it's very, uh, that's the most enthusiastic I've ever been. <laughs> Says the guildmaster. Well, that shouldn't prove too taxing as long as you keep your wits about you and know what you're looking for. Can you tell me what, tell me where I'll find the cauldron weed the witches want, you ask? Oh, sure, that's the easy bit. It grows in Bufon Fen, I think you've written that down. Yeah. An area of swampland next to Deedlewater, west of the witch village of Dree. Yeah. The tricky part is going to be bringing, back, bringing it back since the toad men of the Fen are very protective of the plants and herbs that grow there. That's why the witches want someone to collect it for them. Mind you, they'll probably pay you a pretty penny if you can get it to them. Nice. If I were you, I'd pay a visit to the bazaar and equip yourself. After all, you never know when you might be glad to find some nose plugs or a length of rope in Buffon Fen. If you want to take the Guildmaster's advice and go to the bazaar, go to page, and note page 38, uh, go to 400. If you want to set off straight away, turn to 38, okay. so let's go. You sure you don't want to get anything else before this quest? No, should we just take what we need? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we never know, because... All my you... notes suddenly make sense, like, once we read that. I've written so right. many notes, so I've literally written... Booth on Fen, next to Deal Water, west of Village yeah. of D, Toadman. Yeah, otherwise that would have been a complete yeah. mumbo-jumbo. Okay. Leaving Thelamonis, you head north across the Windward Plains towards the Witch... The village of the Witch Woman and Booth on Fen. Mm -hmm. Some days later, you find a flat grassland... I guess it's some days later. He'll probably tell you where okay. you're at. Some, point. some days later you find a flat grassland giving way to taller reeds and the ground becomes softer underfoot you press on until the bulrushes tower over your head and you enter a muddy clearing i still feel like maybe we should leave that on three but if we get to the end of the quest and nothing's said we'll, we'll just see what... a few yeah. days yeah Two trails lead away from the clearing through the reed beds. One heads in a north-easterly direction, while the other winds its way northwest. You can't help but notice the webbed footprints that have been left in the mud along the northwesterly trail. Mm. Will you head northeast, turn to 81, or follow the webbed footprints to the northwest? See, it's clearly toad men, but my first thought was like it was going to be some weird inbred people. Right. <laughs> webbed feet. <laughs> what should we do? What's what are the options? We head northeast. We've got the equipment to take on the toadmen, so I think we should go to the toadmen. Yeah, if it is toadmen. Let's do it. Northwest, turn to fourteen. Yeah, we've got the quest page if we need it anyway. But we have no stamina. We've got nine. As you follow the trail, you get the uncomfortable feeling that you are being watched, and then you catch sight of a large pair of eyes blinking at you from among the bulrushes. Mm -hmm. A moment later, they are gone, but your creeping sense of paranoia remains. If you keep following the trail of footprints northwest, no, yeah, northwest, turn to 95. If you want to return to the clearing and follow the north easterly trail through the swamp instead, turn to 81. I think the cauldron weed has been protected by the toadmen, so we want to follow the toadmen. Yeah. So, 95. It's true, you're being watched. No. Hey, Kenwar. Kenwar is in the swamp watching us from afar. He's a toad man. Night. Kernel, have you got webbed feet? <laughs> 95. Yeah, I've got distracted by feet. 
Strange croaking noises echo through the fens and you put your hand to the hilt of your sword for reassurance. The ground is getting wetter underfoot and you almost slip more than once as you make your way along the trail. You enter another muddy clearing. What? Um, wet floor and slip in into the muddy trail. Other than the path you followed to reach this point, there is only one other path leading away, heading north. If you have the world's law special yes. skill, turn to 75. Which we spent three months learning in a yes. church. I'm just picturing that place from Game of Thrones where Sam went. No, but I am a pretty strong swimmer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we might need you then. The guildmaster told you to be on the lookout for toadmen whilst in Bufon Fen. During your studies in the libraries of the Halls of Learning, you read, you read in Gascon's Beastery, Beastery, I think that's right, Bestery, Beastery, Beastery. of Northwest Alansia that toadmen have a nasty habit of luring travellers to sinkholes in the swamp where they drown. You decide to give the centre of the clearing a wide berth just in case and set off along a new path northward. So we probably nice. could, we might yeah. have So three, three, five. Or at least lost some um, stamina. Mm. You press on through the fens until the trail opens up as it reaches a riverbank. A profusion of brightly coloured plants grows beside the sluggish river, but which one of them is the herb known as cauldron weed? I, I think we surely we wrote this down because it was like it told us something about the description of it. If you, I don't remember either of these. If you want to pick several bunches of a plant with no flowers and ragged dark green leaves, you'd say that sounds like cauldron weed. Turn to 385. If you want to pick several tall stems that are adorned with bright yellow star-shaped flowers, turn to 405. Have I written anything? I feel like... We... Surely cauldron weed is the dark green. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it'd be too obvious to pick the... the sp the one that's probably poison. Or maybe it's too obviously, obviously. Cauldron weed. It should look like weeds. Surely the star things are like got a different name. I think that's a trap. Should we pick the dark green leaves? Yes. Hold that page. You must seek the land of what does that say? What? There, yeah, what Kaywan said. <laughs> I so nearly fell for that then. So K1 has written the word Sugandi. Sugandi. <laughs> that's the is that the first time that that's not caught me out? Probably, yeah. <laughs> I should have left you to read. You it. should have, but, and I would have just said it I'm almost. <laughs> Three, eight, five. Oh, am I um are we checkpointing him? Yes. You can't just say hold the page. That counts as a checkpoint. Okay. What does a checkpoint mean? It just we means have to we drink. And we can write it down. To be fair, I think the last two streams I've been drinking more than you have. I've been drinking mine faster. Which no, that never surprising. happens. I think it's this uh, new ginger beer we got in here. Well, Three, ginger eight, mixer. Eight, five. Go. Three, eight, five? Yep. As you pick the leaves, they exude a. Okay. No, I just thought I was just worried we were gonna die then. As you pick the leaves, they exude a sticky sap that smells like burnt porridge. It really is quite unpleasant. Add the ragged leaves to your adventure. Are they just called ragged leaves? Yeah. But we got a checkpoint, so. I really hope this is cold and weed. Why can't we take it, both? Surely it's too obvious picking the one that's really colourful. I don't know, because what if it's it. what if we hand this in and they're like, oh, that's just regular weeds. We'll go back to where we were. Yeah, true. 268. The Gandhi. Ooh, picture time. Was it Toad Man? It's a Toad Man with the pitchfork. That's a cool picture. With a pitchfork? Yeah. Like farming. It might be a trident. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's definitely a trident. Either way, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, when you think you have picked enough, you stow the plant safely in your backpack and begin to retrace the route you took through the fence. You are considering picking some of the other plant just to be sure you've got the right one. When you are startled by a loud croaking noise and a large bulky shake shape 
leaps from the reeds and lands on the riverbank in front of you. It is as tall as you are, but its skin is warty and the colour of stone. Its misshapen head reminds you of an amphibian and its hands and feet are webbed too. The creature opens its cavernous mouth and belches out a deafening croak as it tightens its grip on the trident it's, it's holding. It's a trident. What did I say? A uh, pitchfork. And then I, s- I corrected the you trident. You did, you did. Uh, you have no cho- choice but to fight the Toad Man. So we're fighting Kernoir. Oh, this guy's quite tough. Is he? A Toad Man, lovely time. He's made of stone, though he's not quite as green as I pictured. That's such a cute little moment. It's like those little uh, things in Neo you find. Um, to- oh, yes, here, here we, we go. go. See, this said on the back that the Toad Man. Yes. So we got a picture That's prepared. a very good Toad Man. Yeah, I know. I like That's it. why I chose it. Look at it. That is the, what we're up against. So we have. Oh, a, he's got two little hands on the front. Like a T Rex. Two little hand mandibles. So his skill is nine and his stamina is eight. Oh, no. And it's just if you win the battle, 10 to 4 right. It's probably going to be quite a tough fight, actually. Is it? He's like, oh shit! So here we go. Potential drinks going. Yes. On. We got ten. What? What, what are the, is that? Gold coins and that's provisions, isn't it? Yeah. Just checking Don't if you're on zero. Okay, so our roll. Eighteen for, Eight us. for us. Not bad. So nine or below, please. Yes. Old man is down to six stamina. Those snake monsters in the background remind me of the Piranodon from King Kong Extended Version. The, I've not seen it. Which version, Kern? What, the 2003 one or like the 50s one? I've never seen King Kong. Oh, we should watch it. It's good. Yeah, and I don't know why I've never seen it. You don't like apes. This is true. <laughs> okay, our roll. King, I love King Kong. What is it? 19. 19. So we need a 10 or lower. Yeah. yeah. Come on! Cody. Four. Two more battle roll done. 2005 version, is that when it came out? I'm thinking of Lord of the Rings. Uh, I, I must have seen it. I've seen the one, I've seen the extended bit where Andy Circus is in it, in the swamps. 17? 17 for like, us. You don't remember a giant piranha monster, a lengthy There's a lot of monsters see. in that, so we got 17. Oh. What's that? Eighteen. He's he's he's, he's stuck us with his little mandible hands. His handables. Handables. I'm gonna have to track down King Kong 4K now. Thanks. Yeah, let's watch that tonight. No, we need to find a Blu-ray. I need to watch a 4K version. Okay. Nineteen. Nineteen for us. So ten or lower for the enemy. Yeah. Oh, I don't want Toban to die. Hi. I, just, I don't know, I quite like him. You've got an affection for him. I totally <laughs> deprived him and the way Pete. I've not seen anything beyond the basic DVD version. I actually bought it in on HD DVD, which is no longer a thing. 18? 18 for us. So he's got to get a, a what? Not that. Nice. Yeah, so oh no! It's done. Toad Man. Let's go. If you win the battle, 10 to 4 to 8. Let me get rid of this toad. Which is showing as a kraken on the, the monster battle page. Really? Oh no. I don't know why it does that. Where there is one toad man, there are bound to be more. And so you set off at a jog through the marshes. But then the path splits unexpectedly before you. You don't remember coming this way. Which branch of the trail do you want to follow? Mm-hmm. The left branch or the right branch? See, this is where I always go left and you always go right. Two rock, paper, scissors. Your checkpoint is wrong. Well. How much drink have you got left? Enough. Just enough. Four to eight. Four to eight. All my Lord of the Rings stuff is also still basic DVD. See, that is one film that oh, actually looks okay, well. I mean, I, I don't know if you have a, a player for it, but we watched them recently. Well, like last year in the 4K and he looks so they, good. Yeah, they look awesome, like real good. So, left or right, should we roll for it? Are you rock paper scissors? Not roll it. Roll for it. Yep. Highest highest roll gets the win. That's why I'm rolling okay. for left. Yeah. Can I have a dice? 
There's dice there for you. I can't see it. <laughs> okay. Yes. But, sorry, left it. So we're on left, right? Left, not right. Uh, left branch four four eight. Oh, plane gets killed. I don't even remember if I saw all of the Lord of the Rings in the cinema, which is shameful. I admit, that's pretty shameful. Yeah. It's Although, been... being a three-hour movie, I'm not surprised if you did fall asleep. So, I'm reading the cinema actually. Go on. Then. Shall we do? It? Yeah. As you run along the left-hand path, you catch sight of more of the creatures hopping through the reeds to intercept you. You soon find yourself surrounded and both the way ahead and behind are blocked by toadmen. One of them steps forward, his trident pointing into your direction, and croaks, None may enter the fens of the toadmen. Our marsh and herb gardens are holy. They are for no eyes but our own. There is only one punishment for breaking this law, death. If you have the spelling special skill and you want to use it, 10 to 30, if not, 10 to 350. Okay. This is where we die. Potentially. I know I saw the first one in the cinema, but don't remember anything else. Okay. <laughs> anything at all. It's a long time ago now, really. You don't think it, it was that old. Time. It was 2000, 2001. There is nothing you can do against such overwhelming number of toad men. You sell your life dear, but in the end you pay the ultimate price. The Toadmen throw your lifeless body into one of the muddy sink pits of Buffon Fen, where your rotting remains will provide their precious plants with a source of food. That's how I would have wanted to die. Surrounded by Toadmen. Yes, with tridents. With pitchforks. <laughs> with pitchforks. Oh well, good job we checkpointed it. Yeah. That was a... That, like, if you're playing legit, like, no cheat at all, yeah. you'd be really depressed. So we're taking the right pan, right branch, yes. 295. Oh. You flee through the fens, your heart pounding and panting for breath. You do not slow your steps until you feel the ground become firmer underfoot once more, and the towering reeds give way to the level grasslands of the Windward Plains. Eventually, you reach a well-worn track and the signpost which directs you east towards Dree. I really hope this is the right plan. You oh, pass shit. through a range of low hills and cross a rickety wooden bridge that spans a fast-flowing river, until you eventually come to a village of the Witch Woman. It is truly a vile place. Its buildings, ramshackle, its inhabitants, a combination of grotesque parodies of life and the aged crones who call this gloomy place home. A foul miasma hangs over the place, no doubt the result of all the potion brewing that must go on here. The witch women keep a wary eye on you as, they make your, as you make your way into the village square, where you announce in a slightly unsteady voice that you have brought the cauldron weed they wanted. You've brought the cauldron weed here, asks the toothless hag, bent almost double with age. <laughs> That's right, you to, and take the plants you've collected. So this is the witch woman of Dree. She looks how I felt this morning. Yeah. When I woke up. And probably how I looked as well. Potentially, yeah. <laughs> you say you take the plants you collected from Buffon Fen from your pack. Which plants did you pick? Oh no! Ragged leaves or star flowers? I really hope it's the ragged leaves. Turn to T18. Here we go. I'm scared. It's gotta be. Read it before you. Oh yes, says the crone when she catches sight of the ragged leaves. You have done well. Supplies of cauldron weed have been running low for a while now, and either no one's been brave enough to enter the Buffon Fen to search for the stuff, or they've had run in with the toad men and never come out again. I'll give you three gold pieces Beautiful. for it. That takes us back, back up, up to up seven. seven. And probably get Aminor as well. I I feel like I live a lot of my life choices from Indiana Jones with the Holy Grail. Why? I don't know. That's just... You always pick the shit-looking thing, and then you get rewarded for it. I can't remember. Why? What happens in the Holy he Grail? He picks the little wooden goblet. He's got to pick from all the goblets. Holy Grail. The Holy Grail. Which one is that? It's the one where he does the trials, isn't it? And he... Um... We got Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. We got. Have I just made that up? Is it not actually? And we got the Last Crusade. Oh, it's not one that might be. And the fourth one is hide in a fridge and get nuked. Am I thinking Monty Python? Yes. (laughs) But I am thinking about the um, Indiana Jones film. I'm not sure. Where he does the trials and he um, steps out onto. That's my favorite one. He steps out and he has to take a leap of faith and there's a invisible floor. Is Sean Connery in it? No. 
Maybe, yeah, he might be his dad in it. I've not seen that one. Would you are fucking joking? No. You've not seen that? No. Can we watch that tonight? That's the best one. No, we need to watch them all again first. Oh my god. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I got distracted. A crowd of witch women is gathering around you now, keen to see what you've brought them. If you want to try and accept the crumbs, oh, if you want to accept the crumbs offer, turn to one nine eight. If you want to try and haggle with her, in hopes of raising the price, turn to one seven two. They did say they'd pay us a pretty penny for it. Ah, uh, should we haggle? We have checkpoint is before here, but we just go to that page anyway, so. Okay, so do you want me to make a note of a page number? Yeah, because honestly, it's it's only like one page behind, and we're gonna take the right path anyway. So. Um, okay, I'll make a note of two and eight. So we're gonna haggle. We're gonna haggle. I do remember that one. What's I think that? the holy yeah, the holy grail is in it. No spoilers. I believe you've not seen that film. That scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. I put the entire box in. Oh, I need to watch it. What a weird. Okay, here we go. Three gold pieces, is that all? After taking my life into the hands to in hands to collect the finest cauldron weed from the holy herb gardens of Bufon Fen. You explain, raising your voice so the gathering crowd can hear you. Who will give me six gold pieces for this cauldron weed? A murmur passes around the ring of witch women, encouraged by the interest. You continue in a similar vein, turning on the charm in hope. The charm, right? What, <laughs> what skills do we have? Charisma. In the hope of wringing as Lucky. much money from them as possible. If you have the trap knowledge, special skill, turn to 101. If not, test your luck. I'm joking, it's charisma skill. If you have okay. the charisma special skill, turn to 101. If you if not, test your luck. If you're lucky, turn to 101. If you're not, turn to 152. So we can bypass the luck roll with a charisma skill roll. Well, charisma. 101. Charisma. 101? Yes. Oh, no. Yeah, 101. It's weird because I feel like you can only get two skills per playthrough. Possibly. I'll give you five gold. I feel like we've got really good skills. Charisma and World War are a good combo. They have done as good so far. I'll give you five gold pieces, comes a shout from the other side of the square. Very well, very well, mutters the curse witch in front of you. I'll match that and give you something more valuable than gold. Not a curse, please. It's six. Ooh, all of them. <laughs> Done, you say. The <laughs> hag reaches inside her filthy robe and pulls out a black velvet bag. Opening this, she empties five gold pieces into the palm of her claw-like hand and passes them to you in return for the herbs. Cross off the ragged leaves from your adventure sheet and right. add two... We already added the three, didn't we? So yeah, so or nine. three more, yeah. We no longer have ragged leaves. Oh, no. We have much greater... I'm the type who never invests in charisma. I don't know. I do it in like four hours. Oh, I think it's the most handy thing. It is, but it also makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? Because you just bypass like all the conflict. Yeah, I know. But I, I quite like that. Yeah, true. Um, now listen carefully, says the crone mysteriously. To break the shivering curse, Ooh, four things you must find. The powdered horn of a unicorn, Medusa grass, which you can buy at the bazaar. Yeah. The blood of the shriekers and the breath of the one that spoke the curse. And if you're ever passing this way again with any more magical ingredients, do drop by. Pondering the meaning of the curse witch's words, you pocket the gold and leave without further delay. Awesome. Gain one Aminor nice. point. So we need to definitely write okay, that down. So we need... Medusa grass, which we can buy. Yep. Yeah. Maybe we should get that ASAP. Mm, maybe we should do the other quest first. Um, a powdered horn of a unicorn. It doesn't say black unicorn. Put all my points into stealth if I can. Depends what the game is, really. Some games stealth is actually helpful. Some games stealth is a. Uh, it's okay until you get caught and then you just end up killing everyone anyway. Skyrim stealth and Skyrim as well. If you have, yeah, but you can do that with illusion as well. Um, powdered unicorn horn. Well, it's Blood of the Shriekers. We're we gonna get that. Um, we the need the, the beeswax. Beeswax, yeah. So. Oh, so it wasn't. It was earwax we had before, wasn't it? Not we didn't beeswax. have any. That was the last book. Yeah, that was the, that was uh, the uh, giants. Trolls. Yeah. Um, um, breath of the one that spoke the curse. Who is that? 
We don't know yet. It's probably the king. Or Zin. Cardinal Zin. Yeah, maybe. Or so, the shivering man. So basically we know that we don't need to go back to the pest control until we've done a lot of other yeah. stuff. But we do need to go back with um, beeswax. Yes. I'm going to say we need to get beeswax. Yeah. Okay. Pondering the meaning of the curse, which is words, you pocket the golden leaf without further delay, gain one Aminor point, turn to one, eight, one. You are not sorry to turn your back on the village of Dree and set off south towards Salamonis again. Several days later, the west gate comes into view, and you make your way along the Golden Way once more, heading for the Adventurers Guild. Eight days have passed Ooh. since you were last here. Move the wheel of the week eight days, then turn to three at three. So we're going back to Friday, right? No, we're going to Wednesday. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've gone eight days. We've gone oh, over a week. Okay, yeah. So we are now on Wednesday. Yeah, and something happens on Wednesday, yeah, I think. I think. Does, uh, uh, turn to three eight three. I pick a class like Rogue. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a mixture, isn't it, Rogue? I always go rogue. I've never ever played as like a heavy character. Ever. Oh, I always did in the old Dark Souls first. Shield and sword. No, I hate being slow. I've ne I'd never used shields. You can't parry though. You don't need to. You can roll. It's time you got so some much needed rest. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. It's time you got some much needed rest and recuperation. If today is fire day, 10 to 253. If not, 10 to 403. I'm scared to buy any health back. Should we stay on the street again? <laughs> what? So, as you're a member of the Adventurers Guild, you have the right to rent a room for the night here. Board and lodging at the guild will cost you two gold pieces, but you'll be able to restore four stamina points. Alternatively, you can go to the Half Don Sock, pay one gold for two stamina mm. points, or you can sleep on the streets free of charge. Uh, but you'll only get one stamina point. Maybe we should sleep in the half downed. It's only one gold and we get two stamina points back. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. If today is Wednesday, turn to 465. Yes. So if you take the 465, I will take one gold off and... Um... Just because, if you think, really, provisions cost five gold, so... Yeah. So our stamina is now gone up by two? Yep. Yeah. Taking us back to nine. Ooh. You sleep deeply. What time are we on? You sleep deeply, and as you sleep, you dream. You are standing at the foot of a menacing mountain. The steep face in front of you looks to have been savaged by the claws of some gigantic beast. Gargantuan. Gargantuan beast. Sharp, rocky crags jut out at unnatural angles. At the top of the mountain, you can see an eerie red colouring, probably some strange vegetation. Across the clearing is a dark cave entrance. This is a dream. So right? we're in a dream. If you want to enter the cave, turn to 100. If you'd rather walk in the opposite direction, away Surely from the Surely we can't die in a dream. We might get cursed. We're here. We're going to regret it if we don't try yeah, that. I feel like we're going to get more information. I'm going to make a note of 465 and have a drink. Yep. If you want to join. I will. You peer into the gloom to see dark, slimy walls with pools of water on the stone floor in front of you. The air is cold and dank. The light, your light, you light your lantern and step warily into the blackness. Cobwebs brush your face, and you hear the scurrying of tiny feet. Rats, most likely. Make a note of your current skill, stamina, and luck scores. Oh no! So we're probably going to die in dream, but you might nine, wake up. Nine, six. You set off into the cave, and a few yard after a few yards, you arrive at a junction. Will you turn west or east? I'm gonna say west. I was gonna say west as well. Then we're going west. There is a right-hand turn to the north in the passage. Cautiously, you approach a sentry post on the corner, and as you look in, you can see a strange goblin-like creature in leather armour asleep at his post. Mm. You try to tiptoe past him, test your luck. If you are lucky, he does not wake up and remains snoring loudly. 
If you're unlucky, you step with a crunch on some loose ground and his eyes flick open. So it's one dice, isn't it? It's two. Is it? I'm sure. I'm sure test your luck is two. Yeah, because it's yeah. always 50% at six. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah! Oof, so, okay. Do you want to deduct the look point? Yes. Um, so if you're lucky, he does not wake up and remains snoring loudly. Turn to 301. Wasting a luck point in a dream sequence. Yeah, I know, but we might get um, some big hints. Yeah. Maybe something about the unicorn or something. Mm, this... What page? 301. To your left, on the west face of the passage, there is a rough cut wooden door. You listen at the door and can hear rasping, a rasping sound, which is, which may be some sort of creature snoring. Do you want to open the door? If so, turn to 82. If you wish to press on northwards, turn to 208. We might as well check mm, it let's out. Let's open the door. Let's do it. Come on, let's do a dream. Good dream. It's just a dream. Rasping sound. Is it like breathing? I think so. The door opens to reveal a small, smelly room. In the centre of the room is a rickety wooden table on which stands a lit candle. Underneath the table is a small wooden box. Asleep on a straw mattress in the far corner of the room is a short, stocky creature with an ugly, warty face. The same sort of creature you found asleep at the sentry post. He must be the guard for the night watch. You may either return to the corridor and press on northwards, or creep into the room and try to take the box without waking the creature. If you want to try to steal the box, test your luck. If you are lucky, he does not wake up. If you are unlucky, turn to three. Right, we're doing it, we're doing it. Um... Potentially, might be a drink roll. Well, we could just fight him if not. I, I, I want to know what's in the box, though. Yeah, I know, but we can fight him then take the box. I don't think that'll be an option. Oh, okay. okay. Come on. Go. So we've got to get a five or less. Five or less. <laughs> Ten. If you, let's see what happens. Yeah. If you're unlucky, turn to 33. You've got a deductible point as well. If not, should we drink till we roll lower? Yeah, I think so. A sleeping creature awakens, stalled. He jumps up and rushes at you, unarmed with your sword. You should be able to defeat him, but his sharp teeth look rather vicious. You may escape through the door or stand to fight the orc who is attacking you. Fight him? Yeah. Oh, okay. If you defeat the creature, you may take the box. Turn to 147. Nice. However, if you lose the battle, turn to 200. We points. have an orc. He looks a lot bigger than I imagined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good boy. Okay, so skill. Right, we stamina. need to deduct one look. Yeah. What's his stamina? His skill? Skill. skill is six and his stamina is four. Oh, he shouldn't be too bad. He's a baby. But what about his vicious claws? Mm. Uh, so our luck is down to four. Yes. There is a theme park in my country where you can try and steal treasure from a dragon puppet. It scared the life out of me. Oh my god, Ooh, that, that sounds ace. What place is that? Where is it? That would scare me now. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll fight. Right, let's do it. So, let's go. Our roll. Oh, I got a six. Now I got a one. Pick scene versus. He's got to get a ten. I can share a picture in Discord. Yeah, yeah do, it, do, do it. it. Come on. Nice. So, he's down to two. So only one more hit. If we can track some kind of disease in a dream that kills us in real life. Certainly not. Twelve! Yeah, twelve for us. So what's he need? Six? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, he's hurt us. Oh, well, there's our stamina. We just regained. Gone back to zero. Down to back to zero? Yeah, back to seven. Well, we just wasted those gold. Yeah, we? no. Okay, our roll. 16. 16 for us, so 10 or lower. Yes, he's dead. He's dead, okay. So, where is he? Where is he? Up here? There we go. He was a dragon. Um, If you defeat the creature, you may take the box. That's go it, one for seven. Go. You leave the room and open the box in the passage. Inside you find a single piece of gold and a small mouse, which must have been the creature's pet. 
You keep the coin and release the mouse, which scurries off down the passageway. Gain two luck points. Nice. Did we so, get gold as well? Uh, yeah, one gold and two luck points. Oh, that's good. So idea. basically we've not gained anything, actually. Are we still continuing down this pathway, though? Um, 10 to 208, possibly. Okay, so we only spent one gold last as well, so... Yeah. Well, we won. We're two stamina down, but we've got the gold back to pay for it if we need anything. Are we still in a dream? Yeah, I think so. 208. Further up the passage, along the west wall, you see another door. You listen at it, but hear nothing. If you want to try opening the door, turn to 397. You want to continue, turn to 363. We might as well check it. Might as well try it, yeah. 397. So this is just because it's a Wednesday, isn't it? And we slept. Yeah. The door opens to reveal a small room with a stone floor and dirty walls. There is a stale smell in the air. In the centre of the room is a makeshift wooden table on which is standing a lit candle. Under the table is a small box. In the far corner of the room is a straw mattress. You may either open the box or leave the room. Open the box. I have a bad feeling, but let's So where is it? Box. Where's the box? Under the table. <laughs> What's that got to do with a straw mattress? It's basically, it's like a cell. This is like yeah. the exact same room where the goblin was in. Let's it's just another it. room. It's like a let's cell. Found it. It. a nice video of the dragon on post on Discord. Nice. Awesome. Okay, well. 240. It's told us to remember our skill and stuff, so I feel like we can't yeah. die in this stream. Oh yeah, it'll be so we might as well gamble or whatever. Oh great. The box is light, but something rattles within. You open the lid and a small snake darts out to bite your wrist. You must fight the snake. Oh. oh easy. If you kill a snake ten to level five, if the snake kills you, ten to two hundred. What? What happens on page two hundred? <laughs> I kind of I'm curious to see what happens on page yeah, two. Just tell, yeah, but don't do it. Yeah. Okay, so we take um, this. Yeah, I'm just trying to find. So we're using the eel again, aren't we? <laughs> have we not got a snake? No. Oh, here's our snake. There we go. <laughs> so skill. His skill is five, and his stamina is two. Oh, so he's a one shot. Oh, nice. It already is two. Let's go. Okay, let's do him. Let's do him. Let's do him in. Let's do him good. Fuck him up. Nice. Snake is done. Oh, maybe we weren't meant to kill him. What he kills us, that's the only other option. <laughs> if you kill a snake, it turns a one, four, five. The snake was holy. I didn't get killed by that thing. The box has fallen to the ground during your fight with the snake. There wasn't much of a fight. Out of it has fallen a bronze coloured key with number 99 carved into it. You may take this key with you, note it on your equipment list, add one luck point. We can't, can we? No. Uh, oh, or did we add. I don't think we put any in luck, did, did we? Did we not? I Maybe thought we, we did. Put one in. Uh, we might be seven, actually. I'm sure. We... Yeah, we did. 10 skill, 13 stamina, and seven luck. Nice. Not a waste then. Um, leave the room. Add one luck point. So what have we got? A bronze, key, a bronze ninety nine key, like. I was gonna say that ice cream. I need a toilet. Or are we wrapping up soon? We will be soon. Bronze key. Ninety nine. Further up the passage on the west wall, you see another similar door. You listen to the door and grimace to hear the worst singing you ever heard in your life. Do you want to go into the room and investigate this hideous din? Turn to 370 or walk up on the passageway. What quest is this? This is a dream. Oh, okay, so we should be all right then. <laughs> I was just thinking if we had any items, but if we're in a dream, should we do it? Yeah. 370. What if it kills us when we wake up? It could be in a coma forever. The door opens to reveal a small room. The room is dirty and unkempt. A straw mattress lies in one corner. In the centre of the room is a wooden table upon which a candle burns, lighting the room with its flickering flame. A small box rests under the table. Seated around the table are two small creatures with warty skin, dressed in leather armour. They are drinking some kind of grog, and by the way they stagger to their feet on your arrival, you assume they are very drunk. 
You may either draw your sword and leap toward them, or slam the door quickly and run up the passage. We might as well try and kill them. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this is like a sort of bonus round. Like this is like a yeah, bonus. like get what you can from. Like, I might actually get yeah. to the yeah. Go on. Then. You, while you sort. Um, which enemy was it? I don't know yet. It's probably the. Orc. Oh, it's the orcs. It's the um... Top right. I think. No, that's not an orc. That's it. Okay. I'll read it out and then I'll, I'll fill you in when you get back. The two drunken orcs now facing you are obviously startled with your entrance and quickly as they're able, they fumble around for their weapons. You must attack them each one in turn. Their drunkenness allows you to add one point to your dice roll when rolling to work out your attack strength. So our uh, skill is up to 11, basically. So we've got first orc and second orc. If you win the battle, turn to 378. Uh, if you lose the battle, turn to 200, or you can escape by going to 42. So we might as well fight them. So let's get straight into it. So they both have a skill of five, and they have one as a skill of a stamina of four. So let's take him on first hand. So what does that to give a nine? So that's nine, seven, five, three, one. Let's just take on Orc number one first. So I'm going to make my dice roll. So we've got a skill of 16, which they can't beat. So that takes them down to two stamina. What's happened? Two drunk Orcs. We're going to fight him because he's drunk. We get an extra skill point. So uh, we've got 11 skill, basically. So Nice. Can they even... I didn't even roll the second one because we, we beat them already. So here we go. It's our roll again. Uh, 13... 18. Yep. They can't get that, so orc number one is dead. Nice. So, what is the stamina of the second orc? Uh, five. Five. Okay, so it's our roll. Oh, so, we've got 11. Yeah, we have another skill of an 11. 15? 15 for us, so 10 or lower for the enemy. Beautiful. Ooh. So, enemy is down to three stamina. Oh, I hate the ones where you end up with got like one left. Yeah. 10, uh, oh, 11, 12, 13, 19. Can't get that, can they? Nope. So she's down to one stamina. That wasn't the roll, that was me putting the dice in there for some reason. Okay. <laughs> Alcohol. I wish I kept. Oh, shit. <laughs> 12, so what's that? 13. 13. 11? Yes. They're both dead. Easily done. Okay. 378. You wipe your blooded sword on the mattress. The green blood leaves a slimy stain on the straw. Stepping over the bodies towards the table, you flinch at the foul stench of the creatures. You pick up the box from under the table and examine it. It is a small wooden box with crude hinges. The name Ferigo Di Maggio is inscribed on a brass nameplate on the lid. If you wish to open the box, turn to 296. If you decide to leave it behind and leave the room, turn to 42. We got to do it. We're in a dream. Let me write that name down. <laughs> Ferigo Di Maggio. Maybe this is the, the cursed person. Yeah, we're not gonna like unleash the curse on us. We have fought for it though. Yeah, come on. 296. I don't know what these guys would be doing with it though. Oh no, I'm scared. I feel like we're gonna get cursed. The box contains a small leather bound book entitled The Making and Casting of Dragonfire. You open the pages and begin to read. Fortunately, it's written in your own language and so was probably not understood by the orcs otherwise this treasure would certainly not be as loosely guarded as it was however rather than learning how to cast dragonfire the dragonfire spell you find yourself reading a page entitled how to break a curse which states three things that you will need a powdered unicorn horn is this not the same as to what the witch told us soon find out powdered unicorn horn this is the break a curse yeah medusa grass yeah. And the breath of the one who spoke the curse. Yes, that's everything yeah, apart exactly from the it. unicorn horn. Oh, do we... oh, no, apart from the blood of the shriekers. Yes, yeah, so 
Okay. So maybe you do need all four anyway. Yeah. Repeating this information to memorize it, you leave the room turned to 42. Oh, no. So we have we not actually gained anything? Well. I suppose that's another way of getting the knowledge, isn't it? We got gold and um, some some luck. Hi guys, just drop in and say hello. I can't watch that I've not finished the phone yet and I don't want to spoil it. No worries, John. Appreciate Cheers, you. John, hope, hope you're doing well. Yeah, hope you're well and hope your uh, adventure is going well in the secrets of Salamonis. We're having a good time with it. Yeah. You eventually arrive at the end of the passage at a three-way junction. Oh, great. You may turn either to the west or to the east. I reckon if we're going to do like this sort of dream thing multiple times, we might as well just continue. Keep going west. So keep going west. 257. The passageway runs straight for several meters and then ends at a wooden door. You listen at the door and hear angry shouting coming from within. We investigate, turn to 168 or turn back. So we might as well. 168. I haven't spoiled this one. I want finishes. <laughs> 168. Is that right? I think so. We're going to have my dinner. See you next time. No worries, John. Enjoy dinner. Yeah, enjoy, dude. You open the door to a large room. A large chair behind a solid-looking table suggests to you that someone or something of rank uses this room. A chest in the centre catches your eye. In a corner of the room stands a man-sized creature with a warty face, standing over a smaller creature of a similar race. With the whip in his hand, the orc chieftain has been beating his servant, who is whimpering beneath him. Will you attack them both, spring at the chieftain in the hope that his servant will aid you, or leave the room and head back to the junction? Do we help the the uh, whipper? Maybe he likes being whipped, though. Maybe. Probably. But I, I would probably... Really. I just hope... I just hope he then doesn't come and shank us from behind. Yeah, that's the only bad thing. If we have to have a fair fight with him, fair enough. But if he, like, mugs us, then... I think, should we should, I think we should be moral here. And... Yeah, I mean, it is a dream as well. Yeah, we keep thinking this is real life. But... My dinner will be fucking bread. We've not even we've not eaten yet, so we're going to make some. Probably like half six or something. Uh, so spring at the chieftain, the whole serving will aid you in hope of. So it doesn't sound promising, but we'll see. Yeah, but yeah, I bet he's really obedient, isn't he? Yeah. As you spring at the chieftain, his serpent. Oh, fucking hell. As you spring at the chieftain, his serpent rises to his feet, picks up a hefty wooden stick, and joins the melee. But to your disappointment, he attacks you. Ungrateful wretch, seeing this, you may escape through the door down the corridor or continue the fight, turn to 372. Let's fucking do him. Yeah. 372. Hefty <laughs> serpent, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. We were saying it as we did it, but we still went ahead with it. The battle commences. Uh, it's got to be orc again, isn't it? Yep. Multiple orcs. So, fight them one at a time. We've got the orc chieftain. Okay. Uh, should we kill him first? Or should we do the servant first? Let's do the servant first. We've been a little bench. So his skill is five. Yep. And his stamina is three. Fight them one at a time. If we defeat them both, turn to 21. Yep. Right, here we go. So he's got a stamina of three, so... Ten. Fifteen. Do we still don't have the... No, th these ones aren't drunk, so we're back to yeah. ten. Yeah, so fifteen for us. Nice. Down to one stamina for the servant. The submissive orc. The whipped. Yep, whipper snapper. Oh. Twelve. Twelve. Seven or below. No. He's... Yeah. Yes. He's hit us. Yeah. Eleven. We got twelve, didn't we? Did we? Yeah, we rolled a one and a one. This is twelve. Oh shit. <laughs> so he's dead. So what is the stamina? Uh, the chieftain. It is seven and six. Six stamina. This guy's a bit tougher, but hopefully yeah. we get something good from killing him. In a dream. Yeah. <laughs> But we might get. We might get Aminor or something, even though we probably don't need him. Skill for you or something, okay. So what's that? 16. 16 for us. 10. So, Chieftain is down to. 4. 
four. At least it's even. Mm. Our roll. Fourteen. Fourteen. So seven or lower. Yes. Down to two. The two is going down. This is where we roll a one and a one. Yep. <laughs> Sixteen. Sixteen. So that's a nine or lower. Sixteen. Yes. So it's even. Yeah. I'll roll again. Eighteen. Can he even do that? Yes. What does he need? Eight. It's eleven, yeah. It's not... Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So he's dead? Yeah, he's dead. Nice. Uh, uh, if you defeat them both, ten to twenty-one. Do I go? I think so. Yeah. Twenty-one. The green blood of the dead orc smell foul as it seeps from their bodies. You step around the corpses and investigate the chest. It is a sturdy affair made of strong oak and iron and is firmly locked. You may try to smash the lock with your sword or leave it alone. Maybe you need a skill roll or a brawling score. Yeah, well but um, yeah, what's, unless we find something in the door and come back to it and it's knackered now. I don't think we'll be able to come back in the dream. Should we try it then? Yeah, we can't break our sword in the dream. 339. We can break our sword in the dream. We don't know what to expect, though. It's got to be something more than just using a weapon on it, though, isn't it? Yeah. I reckon it'll be a, a roll. What am I turning to? Two, three, three, nine. The lock was obviously inadequate. It flies off and oh, lands on the floor God. several meters away. You lift up the heavy lid and your eyes widen as you see the gold sheen coming from within. A fair number of gold pieces are inside. In one corner lies a small black bottle with a tight glass stopper containing liquid of some kind. Is it a nail bomb? Also in the chest is a silky black glove. But as you're admiring the treasure, you hear a soft click and wince in pain as a small oh no. dart shoots forward into your stomach. Oh no! Roll one dice and subtract this number of points from your stamina. Oh no. At least you can't die. Oh no. To determine the effect of the poison on the dart tip. If you're still alive, turn to 201. Oh! I'm gonna give us a fucking wow for that. Yes. So with stamina is on six. So do I write these things down or not? It hasn't told me to write them down. Maybe see what's on the next page then. Let me just make a note of 339. Yeah, it hasn't told us how many gold has it, so... You sink to the floor, you pull the dart out and decide to bandage the wound, this gives some relief, but st you still feel weak. You decide to take it easy and examine the contents of the chest, but if you wish, you may eat some provisions here. Hang on, we're in a dream. Yeah. At the end of all this, it's going to tell us to put our scores back to what they were, and it's all going to be for nothing. We'll see. There are 25 gold pieces, on the, and the label on the bottle shows it to be a potion of invisibility, good for one dose. The glove is a mystery. You may put any or, or all of these into your backpack and leave the room. All of them? I'm worried about the glove. You're a bit silky. As long as it doesn't kill us. The glove? Yeah. No, I think it's got to be good. You may put any or all of them into your backpack. Do you want to not take the glove? I think this might. Should we not take the black glove? No, uh, no, I feel like we should. Maybe right, let's checkpoint this. Is a final checkpoint of the night because we are going to be ending this very soon anyway. So. Okay. So yeah. what page are we on? Two hundred one. Okay. So have you written the stuff down? Yeah. Have you put twenty-five gold? No. So I'm going to see what's on the next page first. Okay. So have you got Potion of Invisibility and the, the glove written down there? I've got Silky Black Glove, Potion of Invisibility. Okay, so 293. You arrive back at the junction of the passage and walk straight on eastwards, turn to 113. Maybe we need the glove for something. Do you want to add 25 gold? Okay, I'll add the gold. 
One run three? Yep. What's that, 34? You maybe. It's over. Oh. You arrive at another junction in the passage. You may either go northwards or continue eastwards. If we go okay. east, are we going to end up... I think eastwards is probably going to find us more stuff. Should and, go east? Yes. Maybe wrap it up. Okay, shall I make a note 113? Yeah, let's let's leave it here at 113. So we're still in the dream. And we've basically done all of the westerly parts. And we're going to be heading out in north. Which is probably going to take us out or head east to continue and... Maybe get even more loot. So, and we have done quite a fair amount longer than usual, but we were expecting to wake up from the dream and end it. But, yeah. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff, and if we do get this 34 gold, we can literally buy everything from the bazaar. I, I just really hope it doesn't say, oh, nothing you picked Reduce up. Reduce your pants. everything back yeah. to what it was. Probably, yeah. <laughs> unless, the thing is, unless this dream place is a real place later on and we know what chests and stuff not to go into. Anyways, we've uh, we've done a, quite a fair bit of progress there. We've finished the quest of the Toad Men. We know what to do for the Shrieking... The sh sh we know how to break the curse. Shivering Man. Yeah. And the Shrieking Things. We need our yes. beeswax. So we we're on our, well on our way to completing a few more of these quests. So I hope you've enjoyed part three of our playthrough. And we'll be back soon with part four. So do let us know down below in the comments section how your playthrough is going. Are you enjoying ours? Do you have any... Any questions for us and we will see you again with part four very soon.